Coming up on Let's Make It, we make a countdown timer because a viewer asked us to. Right after this. Ting, the new way everyone is getting their cell service. No overage penalties, great rates, keep what you do not use, no contracts, and someone will actually pick up the phone when you need support. Use our link and get $25 off your first month's service or your new phone. Just go to tech-zen.tv slash ting. Hello, it's time for another Let's Make It. And this week, we actually skipped a week, and if you were watching live last week, I'm sorry. I was actually out sick. Um, I probably could have done a show, but I would have been coughing a couple times a minute and I just didn't think it'd be very productive and nobody else would really enjoy it either. And I wasn't really feeling good. Actually, you can kind of hear my voice is still kind of scratchy. I'm still getting better. Um, but I feel a lot better. Just my voice in my throat and drainage and stuff like that still going on, but we didn't do a show last week. Also, Bob is in the middle of moving. So, uh, I'm assuming he's still moving and Bob, good luck with that <laughs> because I sent him an email today and didn't hear anything back, which tells me, uh, knowing how Bob responds to emails, he is busy doing something and I imagine he's still in the middle of his move because I know he's going to say it's going to take a week or two to, to get everything moved. So let's uh, wish Bob good luck during his move this week. So, uh, this week is episode number 42 and it's recorded on November 4th, uh, 2013. And I actually had a little bit of a hard time figuring out what I was going to do this week. I had some things planned, but um, I haven't had much time the last two weeks because there's a lot of changes going on in here. In fact, tonight I was scrambling to get everything back up because um, I'm moving some of my software switching from a Mac to a PC. So I have a better expansion. And uh, in that process today, it didn't work right. So I ended up punting and going back to the old system and I'm having licensing issues. In fact, on the stream, uh, for some reason, Wirecast is no longer licensed on that machine. Uh, so whatever the reasons going on with that, but, um, we are here tonight and we do have something to talk about, but this week's show I actually did today because I got an email from somebody asking about a countdown timer. So we're going to talk about all the countdown, uh, timer, the features that he wanted and we're, you're going to, we're going to walk through the code and, uh, hopefully that helps him out. But I do want to apologize. I got a lot of people in front of me here that are starred or people that I haven't followed up with. Uh, I know Andy as it Fink was had some questions for Bob and I, and I know I haven't had a chance to respond to him. I don't know if Bob's had a chance because being in the middle of his move. Sorry, we will get to that. Um, these people are all your star. You're going to get a response back. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, also, the uh, was Kent was a different question necessarily to this show. We have um, a zero LCD from De Niro, Um And then we have uh, Colin, has about the Zigbee project. So we have all these things in my queue here that I will respond back. It just sometimes takes me a little bit. In these last few weeks, basically tearing apart the studio, moving everything around, and trying to put it back together uh, have been taxing, not to mention getting sick on top of all that. So very sorry for all these delays. Um, as winter starts setting in and we get everything kind of settled in the studio, I think you know weather being not so warm will be inside a lot more and be able to get a little more focused. Okay, so uh, just a reminder, we do have a chat room if you want to come and chat. It is at techzen.tv slash live. You can watch and chat live in there um, all the time. And uh, if you go to youtube.com slash techzen.tv, you can see all of our old shows. They're out there on YouTube, in addition to being actually on our, our website if you go to techzen.tv. So you can subscribe on YouTube, or if you want to get it automatically downloaded, you can subscribe anywhere, Dogcatcher or iTunes, wherever you you know, let's get your podcast from uh, we should be there and if you don't find us in your favorite location please let us know we'll make sure we get ourselves listed out there um if you are on twitter you can follow us at tech zen tv in fact if you follow us on tech zen tv last week we tweeted that we wouldn't be doing a show uh because i was sick and uh, we can you can get updates so you don't show up in the, in the live area and uh, don't have anything there so it's it's and if you want to chat about this show in twitter use the hashtag 
let's make it pound sign let's make it and uh that we do follow that and try to respond back to that now somebody else is also using the pound sign let's make it so we are weeding through that stuff and at some point we may decide to change that because of the other people that are using that already but well we didn't realize that until uh, we started using it and uh if you're on facebook we'd love for you to give us uh, a thumbs up it's facebook.com slash tech zen tv all right, so this week's going to be a fairly short week because I really only have one thing to show you, uh, and uh, I'm going to go over and let me show you what I have here on the table. So what I have here is a keypad, which came from another episode, I believe episode 11, and so I, re I reenacted some of that code, and then I have a I2C LCD. It's a it's a 4x20 LCD, and then right here, all I have is an LED. So I just use this tiny little breadboard, and you see an LED and a resistor, and this is just uh, to represent what a uh, relay would be. So when the LED is on, the relay would be closed, uh, and this is part of a, an email that I got, uh, and I got this email yesterday or today, and I decided this would be a great project for, for a show. So basically, what it is is... This is supposed to be like an exposure timer or a countdown timer. So what you're seeing is asking you to enter the time in minutes or seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna enter in this 10 seconds just to give you an example. So you see there's one and then there's zero. And then to start the countdown, you hit the pound key right here. And to clear, clear it, you hit this one. So I'm gonna clear it. See, we're back to zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put 10 seconds back in again. And then I'm gonna hit the pound. And you're going to see the relay turns on, and you see it counts down. It's going to count down to zero, and it's going to turn the relay off, and it's going to go back and want to know um, how much time I'm going to do again. Now, 10 seconds is going to be there by default. If you want to clear that, you can hit star. The other thing I did is I made this a rotating number. So let's say you already had 10 seconds in there, and you wanted to go a one minute next time. You can just enter another zero. Or if you want to zero the whole thing out and put in another number, or let's say you had four minutes in there, and now you want to do two minutes. You could just do two, zero, and zero, and there's your two minutes. So you don't have to clear it out if you don't want it. Just rotates the numbers out. And at that point, you can hit pound, and it'll go ahead and run the timer again. Now, I also built in an exit. So in addition to clearing, if you hit the star key or the asterisk, it will clear it out in the middle of the timer. So from my understanding uh, of the the requirements of the project for the day was this would be used to do some kind of exposure control. So um, he asked it to be put in in minutes and then seconds, which this is what this is doing, and that pound would go and, and start would clear. Um, he didn't say that he wanted to be able to cancel out of it, but I figured if you're gonna if you want to get out of a timer, you have to be able to get out of it somehow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and walk through uh, some of this code with you, uh, assuming that the switching works, and it did. Okay. There it is. Okay, so let's get down past the comments here. Get back over to my monitor. And we're gonna scroll down here a little bit. So what you notice at the very top is we have to include wire.h and the crystal because we're using the LCD display. And this is something we've used in quite a few projects. And I think we actually talked about the, the one or the two wire interface, episode five or six, pretty early on. We did LCDs pretty early on. And then in episode 11, we did this keypad. So here's keypad.h, if you go back and look at that, that project. So you see right here, I'm taking parts from different uh, projects, which is not a bad thing. I mean, we do this a lot. You start putting up a library of functions, and you just go back to them and copy the functions. So as you do more and more development, you'll be able to get faster and faster at it because you can go back to old projects and pull pieces out of each project, which is kind of what I did here. So I set up control pin 13. So uh, I mainly did that because I wasn't sure I was going to use an LED at first. I was going to just use the LED on the board, but then it wasn't a big enough indicator, so I went ahead and added an LED. But I'm using pin 13. You can use any pin you want. Probably something better than 13 would be like 12, so you don't actually have the LED on the board um, activated. Then I define a, a character array that holds the current time value, and this is the numbers you're typing in. So I store those numbers as four numbers, assuming that the first two are minutes and the second two are seconds, then I just stick a colon between them when I display it, and we'll show you that on down here. So uh, as you type in, you're basically filling in from right to left into these four character array. And then here's our state, our state engine. So we talked about state engines before. Again, we're going to go through something we talked about in the past, and that's a, a state table or state engine. 
And then uh, the timer seconds is the number of seconds for countdown. So this will count from whatever it is down to zero. And when it turns to zero, everything turns off and goes back to normal. And the way I did timing in this is probably not the best way to do timing. However, um, I think for this particular example, it was the simplest one to demonstrate. Uh, what I'd like to do in the future is maybe have Bob come on. He's very good with timers in an Arduino, much better than I am. And maybe do a segment on how to use timers in the Arduino. Uh, I could have used a timer and probably would have been a little bit more accurate. However, I think this is probably accurate enough for what um, this is supposed to be doing. All right, we come down, we define the keypad. We have, in this particular keypad, we have four rows and four columns. Um, in the email, he, he suggested he was going to use a 12 button, which is uh, three columns by four rows. And I just don't have one of those. So I used one that has A, B, C, and D on it, but I'm not going to use those uh, A, B, C, and Ds for this project. Okay, so I set up the pins uh, for the rows, and the pins are for, for the rows is 11, 10, 9, and 8. And then the, for the columns is 7, 6, 5, and 4. And you may wonder why I did it backward like this. And if you look at the wiring uh, on the actual the keypad, these are in order. So if I 11 is the, is the leftmost pin, 10 is the second pin, and on down the line. So it makes it nice and easy and clean to run the wires over. That's the only reason I did it this direction. These could be anything that you want it to be. All right, we define our keypad and we give the, our keys at the top, our row and column pins, and the number of rows and columns, which is you know, four by four. Start up our LCD, and then we come in and we're going to init the LCD, turn on the backlight, and then we're going to display the code entry screen. Now, this really is the time entry screen. I should have renamed this. I took this from another program and I should have just renamed it. But what we're going to do is display the welcome, you know, the, the let's make it. Uh, countdown time and then enter time and then mm colon ss that th this right here does i go ahead and initialize our pin for the relay and i set to output and i turn it low because you don't want to come on uh, by default you want to make sure it's turned off and then i e basically erase the, va the time values and set zeros in there so that something's in there and then i show the enter time which puts up the time on the bottom and risk so it's going to display by default, uh, zero, zero, colon, zero, zero. And if we go back over here and uh, you look at this, you can see right here is the zero, zero, colon, zero, zero. So I'm just basically blanking that screen out so that it is at a good place. And let me get rid of this, okay. So we come on down here now, we enter the loop and we define an integer for as uh, an L, we're gonna use it a little later on here. And then we define our temp value, and you're going to see how I use this shortly. It's how I determine the number of seconds. Uh, it's part of the calculation to do that. I go ahead and get a key from the keypad, or if one exists. And if the key is not equal to zero, which means a key was pressed, and I'm in state number one, which is the default startup state, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to look, and I'm going to say, is it... Uh, I'm going to put it into a switch statement, and I'm going to say, is it asterisk? Well, if it's asterisk, I've already said this resets everything. So uh, I'm going to make sure relay status is off. So setting the relay status to false turns off the relay. And then I'm going to erase the current time value, put zeros in all the locations. I'm going to reshow the entered time. I'm going to make sure the current state is one. I'm going to set my loop count, which we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but the time of the timer to zero and the seconds in the timer equal to zero. So that basically resets everything back to the startup state. And if you come down here and we have, if it's a pound sign, then we know they want to start, they want to go ahead and start doing the timer. They want to activate the timer. So for this, I'm going to take the, and here's where we use the temp values. And since I know the first two characters are the number of minutes, I set temp val equal zero equal to the first zero or whatever it is, it's in the, in the number of minutes in the second one. And then I put a null in the second one. And the reason I do that is I can then call this routine right here called atoll. And you can give it this this uh, character array, and it'll convert it to an integer. So I take the first two digits value, the integer value, and take it times 60, and that's how many seconds. So if it's five minutes, you're gonna get 300 seconds right here, and it's gonna be equal to 300 seconds. So now I take and do the same, use the same temp var value or variable, and put in the seconds. So if it's 10 seconds, it'll be one zero, and then a null. So it's gonna come back, I'm going to say timer seconds, which is equal to 600 from the previous one, plus 10 of ATOL makes 610 seconds, or 5 minutes and 10 seconds. 
So that's, that's how I set the seconds for the timer. And then I say my current state equals two. This state equals two means the timer is running. And we'll get into that when we go down a little bit farther down here. So we come on down and if it's not an asterisk or not a pound sign, then we think it, we assume it's a number because it has to be, and in my case, it could be A through D, but I'm assuming using a 12 digit keypad that it's zero through nine or an, an asterisk or a pound key. So we come down here and we say that we want to uh, go ahead and move everything. So as you saw when I was typing it in, it shifted it left. And there's probably, the way I would do this in C does not work in Arduino. And uh, that's one of the things we talked about in the past. Not all C code works in Arduino. Uh, there is ways I think you can call routines, but if you want to create a library for it, but I didn't do that because I was in a little bit of a hurry to get this done for tonight. So all I did to shift the numbers over was I said that the zero position is equal to whatever's in the ones position. The ones position was equal to whatever's in the twos position. The twos equal to whatever's in the three, and the three is equal to the new one you just put in there. So what that does it basically shifts things to the left. And then I go out here and I show enter time, which basically is putting whatever is in these values with a colon between them on the screen. So as you type, this is what this is going to do. Now that this is there in loops for every key press, unless you go into current state two. So let's go down and look at the state two process. And what we do here is if we're equal to two, we drop into this. And if a key has been pressed, so this is how you get out of the, the timer. If a key has been pressed, I then check and see is the key a star. And if it is, I immediately turn the relay off because I assume you want to abort, abort out of the countdown. I display the main screen again and zero out everything just like I did with the star before. So it does exactly the same thing with the exception of it does turn off the relay uh, and it enters the, it puts the main screen back and makes sure you go back to state number one where you do keypad input again. So assuming that you're not hitting the star key, and you are in state two. Here's where it gets a little bit more complicated and how I did the timing. So you see I have this LPCNT and it's equal to zero. And or, I mean, it's, it's if it's equal to zero, every time it goes past uh, 10 passes by. And the reason that is if you scroll down a little bit farther, I delayed for 100 milliseconds. So it takes 10 passes by to equal a second. So basically what I'm saying here is if it's greater than nine, I know I've been by 10 times. So what I want to do is I want to put it back to zero, decrement the timer seconds by one, show the countdown on the screen, or up to the, up to the countdown on the screen, and then I can come down here and I'm going to say if timer seconds is equal to or less than zero, there's the possibility it could be less than zero or somehow. So less than or equal to is the safe way to do this. I'm going to say, okay, I want to go back to state number one, which is where you enter in the keys. I want to turn off the relay. I want to display the code entry screen and I want to put back the enter time back to the main keypad entry. And if it's not that, I'm going to say I want to turn the relay on because it's greater than zero seconds left. So the first time through here, it's going to, um, after the first second, it's going to take and turn on the relay and it's, it's going to keep going through this loop. And that's only if the loop count is greater than nine. If you come down here, you see his running increasing uh, the loop count. So for every time, 10 times around here, it basically does a check and decrements the timer. It should be in theory, pretty close to a second. Now it's not exactly cause it is doing some other things, but I think for the purposes of what we're trying to use this for, it's probably accurate enough. I didn't actually measure that, but I probably should have before I came on to see how accurate it was. But uh, I imagine it's probably fairly accurate. It's not as accurate as using an actual uh, timer interrupt. But we'll talk about that in a, in a future episode. We need to do like a, a lot more on interrupts and timers in that. All right, so that's this whole thing. So when this gets done, it basically goes back to state number one, and we come back up to the top up here, and we're now in state one right here, and we're going through the keypad input again. So I didn't actually watch and let you see um, how this finished. Let me go back over here. And I'm going to go, I'm just going to put in uh, 15 seconds so it doesn't take... Uh, real long, 15 seconds, and I'm going to go ahead and hit pound, start, and we'll let it finish. So you can kind of see right now we're in that, we're in mo or number two now, we're in current state two, and we're going through that loop. So you got to remember for every second that it goes by, it's going around a loop 10 times. And then there we're zero and we're back to the beginning again. So that's kind of how it falls out, just like that. 
Okay, so let's keep going through the code here a little bit. I do have some other functions down the bottom here that I want to go through. So here's where it says the show entered time. So all I'm doing is I'm setting the cursor to um, the 14th position in, in the, actually it's the 15th position because it's, it's, it starts at zero on the fourth line. And I'm writing out the first two digits, the colon, and then the next two digits. So all I do when I call this is I'm, I'm putting in whatever we have in these, in these character arrays, these, these positions on the screen in a known, a known order. And then we come down here and here's another routine called relay status. And you see me call that with either true or false. So if it is true, then the relay comes on, which turns control pin, which is pin 13 to high. And if it's false, then it can turns the control pin to low. Very simple little routine for that. Okay. So here's the show countdown. And, uh, one of the things you're going to see in here is I have this character array again, this one's six in length and let's see here hold on one second sorry i needed to cough still getting over this okay so now what you see right here is this temporary variable and i'm going to show you how to use that in a second but basically what i do is i set the cursor to zero zero i'm putting asterisk the whole way across Send the cursor to zero one, which is the second line. Remember, row is at the end on this. Um, column is the first one. It's backward how we normally think. And remember, it starts at zero. So this is really row number two, first position. And I'm going to put down these this letter. So it's 20 characters, and it says counting down. And then I'm going to go to uh, the third line, first position. I'm going to put in two asterisks and some spaces. And then you see here S printf, which is a standard C function. It works fine in the Arduino. So I define this six character array up here and I'm going to write out to this actually two characters. Well, it could be two characters. It may just be one character depending on it. Cause I'm not saying force a zero here and then uh, a colon. And then out here I'm saying force a zero. So if it's one second, for example, what's going to put out zero one, cause I'm saying this is a two digit number. Uh, D is a decimal number or a integer number. And then over here, I'm saying timer seconds divided by 60. So that tells me how many minutes, and that goes on this side. And then over here, I'm saying take timer seconds minus, and it seems kind of funny, timer seconds divided by 60 times 60. So what this does is it comes back with a whole number. Ti timer seconds divided by 60 gives you a whole number. And you take it times 60 to get the number of seconds in the whole minute. You subtract that from the seconds, and that gives you the number of seconds left. It says just a different way of doing it. There's a bunch of ways you could do something like this. And that was the quickest way I could do it in my head. So anyways, after I put this out to this variable right here, I then print that variable out to the screen. And then I put out spaces and asterisks, go to the next line and put out a whole line of asterisks again. So that's all that routine does is just show you the countdown. Okay. And then we come down and this is the code entry screen. And you see I call clear screen. This is actually the same routine that we used in the LCD and the um, the keypad entry before. I just copied that other routine. And it's right down here. Basically, this puts out blanks. But then I'm printing out, let's make it uh, countdown time and then enter time in minutes and seconds. And that's all there is to it. And to get the time at the bottom, I'm using you know, it's a routine we just went through, which is right here where I show enter time. So I just call that after I display that screen and that's, that's all there is to it. It's not very long. It's, um, ended up being 230 lines long. And like I said, a lot of this was copied, uh, from another program. I didn't have to do a lot of rewriting on stuff. So I did some, some, you know, new code, code in here too. Uh, but that, uh, whole 230 lines also includes this top section of comments up here. So, um, I did comment this out. I didn't comment out down at the bottom, which I will do that before I stick it out there in show notes and just crop some a little bit more because I was kind of in a hurry. And actually, I, the way I was originally doing the code input uh, was uh, not working the way that I wanted it to. And that's when I went to the the uh, scroll left to, or right to left uh, method, and that worked really well. And it just seems like it works actually a little better than what the other one was going to work as well. So because um, the way the other one was doing it, I was going left to right and trying to figure it out every time, but still displaying it right to left and just doing that didn't, didn't work uh, as good as I thought I was going to. So I basically chucked what I was doing and started over and uh, did this did it this way so uh one more time over here let's go 
back over here. And this is the entire project. So uh, hopefully the, the people who wanted a countdown timer, this would work uh, for what you needed for. Just get rid of this row right there. You don't need that row, that last row. Uh, you only need, you know, this 12 characters right there, or 12 numbers right there, 12 digits. That's all you need. So anyways, uh, that was the project for uh, this week. And I'll have this code out there um, in the um, show notes and everything uh, probably tomorrow, uh, not probably uh, Wednesday at the latest. Uh, I'll probably have this running through edit tonight. So it should be up ready to go tomorrow. I should probably get it all done tomorrow. So uh, that is pretty much all I wanted to cover this week. Just a few other little housekeeping things. Uh, we love having you here live. Uh, we've gotten a lot of emails and getting more and more. And I love, I love it. Uh, I do apologize for getting back to people so slow. Uh, these last couple of weeks, but it's just been a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy, and uh, hopefully that gets better. And it, actually, as you can hear, my voice is starting to starting to go because um, it's the end of the day, and it gets worse and worse by the end of the day. Uh, but as I get better too, I, I have a little more time to spend on things. And being winter, I'm not a winter person. I really, really do not like winter, and uh, I spend a lot more time inside working on things to keep my mind occupied. I like light, so. Um, I have a little bit of the winter sickness or the sad and I actually use a light light sit down here and work with a light in my face uh, for that sun lamp just to help keep me happy I guess through the winter I really don't like winter very much but I don't like snow I don't like cold so it's just the time where I can spend a lot more time in, down here in this room and can do you know so I don't spend much time outside like I would did in the summertime so as that starts to convert over I you know spend a lot more time working on stuff the other thing is um, you may notice I'm haven't shaved today and there's actually a reason for that this is november so i don't grow facial hair very well so for the next four weeks you're going to, have to bear with a very ugly looking face because um i don't grow facial hair very well and uh as a, i don't know if you've ever heard of november but it's a movement uh, i think it's men's breast cancer awareness so a lot of my friends just don't don't shave in, in, in november and uh I'm going to try it this year, although I don't grow facial hair very well, so it's going to look very odd. I may have to keep it a little bit trimmed, but this is actually a week of not shaving. Today is officially a week, and uh, it's not growing in very fast. But for the next four weeks, if you think I'm unshaven or or, or something, that's why. Um, there is a reason. I hate going unshaved. I don't like the feeling of it, but um, I'm doing it with some friends for this month. So you can make fun of my, my, my lack of uh, facial hair all you want. And I haven't told this to Bob yet, too, so when he sees me, he can be a little bit surprised. I don't know. Okay, that is it for Let's Make It this week's a very short one, and hopefully it answered the question that I got in the email. And uh, if you have one to see us do something in particular, please let us know. I do have a whole bunch of things in my list of things to do. I got a whole box of sensors that I just, I've opened up and looked at them in having the time to start plugging them in. So I have a lot of things I want to do around different kinds of sensors as well uh, coming up. But um, if you have something you'd like to see us do, we definitely would like to, to do that and put that kind of ahead of everything. Uh, we get a lot of uh, emails. Like this week, I've gotten six or seven in the last week that were pretty pretty deep. Um, this was just one of the one of them. This one actually wasn't that bad. So uh, if you have ideas, though, for future shows or things you want us to cover, I also started finally playing with the Udo. And uh, I haven't gotten far enough along that I'm comfortable with it yet. Uh, I haven't gotten Unix on it. I've done a little bit. I need. To, I want to install the uh, the Arduino code on the Udo itself versus programming the uh, the Arduino on the Udo separately. So that's something else I want to do. I want to get all that done and, and then come in and do a show about it. So I'm still working on that as well. It's very neat box. It's a very neat little board. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. In fact, I'm. I've really considered using that board maybe for my switcher as well in the larger ones because it has some things built onto it that would be really nice to have in the switcher versus just what's in the Arduino. And I could combine the Arduino for the button control and stuff like that, and then use the Udo for the communication part, plus the touch, it has touchscreen built in, all kinds of neat things are built into it. So I'm really looking forward to spending a lot more time with that. And unfortunately it's been sitting on my desk next to everything else as I tear apart my studio uh, and start trying to get it all back together. It's pretty much back together with a few exceptions of workflow items in, I thought I was going to come in tonight and be the be using the new stuff with a little bit of a hybrid because um, I actually have to write some code for in Windows for my switcher to be able to control it. And uh, and that switcher I don't have right now. I should have it back tomorrow. It's out getting the case made for it. So th there's other things I can use. Like I use this thing to control the current Wirecast that I have on a Mac, but it doesn't work on the PC. So I've written the program on the PC 
Um, but it doesn't work. It wasn't working right today, so I couldn't go use it. And I don't, don't know why yet. So I punted back to the old stuff. But uh, as we go through all this, this is going to start getting a little bit better instead of having all these different pieces laying around everywhere as well. So hopefully that'll my time for that will loosen up a little bit uh, in the next week or so too. And Bob will be back. Uh, hopefully his move is done this week and he gets back on regular schedule and it starts getting uh, on the call with us every week a little bit more. Uh, again, any comments are great. Uh, love to love to have them. If you are subscribed to us, like on iTunes or somewhere like that, if there's a rating system there, can you go get the thumbs up? Because that definitely those ratings help uh, more than what people will realize. If you go out and give us a, give us a good rating, and particularly in iTunes, it really helps us get get found a little bit quicker. And uh, that's one of the things that just helps us get the show to grow a little bit. And one other thing, I've had this question in the last week. I want to make sure I cover this. If you buy things on our site from Amazon. Uh, we do get a little bit of a commission off that. It's like 3% or something like that. It's not a lot. It doesn't cost you anything more. It doesn't, you know, there's no cost to you. But the little bit that we get back helps us to buy the parts and things that we use in here. This helps us to pay for the bandwidth and things like that. I mean, right now we pretty much do it almost all out of our pockets. So if we can help offset that a little bit, that's helpful. So if you have to go, and go to Amazon to buy something, you know, use our Amazon link from the website. That's, uh, that's helpful for us. I uh, just help, help to offset some of the costs that we have. All right, everybody. We'll see you next Monday. For show notes for this show, contacts, and more, go to the techzen.tv website where you can get show notes for all of our shows. We love to hear from our viewers and listeners. We have an email, a Twitter, and a phone number where you can contact us for each show. For details, visit the techzen.tv website and get the show details. You can also make a video and upload it somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo and then just send us a link. You never know, you may see your video in a future show. You can get all of our shows delivered automatically to your favorite device by going to your favorite podcast website like iTunes and subscribing. Each of our shows also has a YouTube channel you can subscribe to to get regular updates. Our shows are also available on most internet radio networks like Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. You can also watch and listen to our shows on Xbox, TiVo, and Roku.